Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of all of the key structures of bacteria. So if they need, if I need to give you any more detail, I'll do separate videos on those topics. I'm just going to use this image and follow right along here in a clockwise fashion. So starting at the top with the fimbrae. So fimbrae, in a word, think attachment. So attachment is very important because if an organism can't attach, then it can't colonize an area, which means it can't infect an area and lead to disease. So there are some examples like, uh, for example, if you take E. coli and remove its fimbrae, it actually will not even be pathogenic, the pathogenic strains of E. coli. So fimbrae, think attachments. I always, I always think of cockle burrs or some people call them sticker burrs when you walk the tall grass and you come out and your shoelaces and socks are covering these little structures. Well, that's kind of what these fimbrae do. So they're, they're necessary for attachment, which is really the first part of an infection. Okay, so that's fimbrae. Next, we have cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is basically everything inside the cell membrane or plasma membrane, except for what's in the nucleus, which doesn't matter here because bacteria don't have a nucleus. So cytoplasm, think all the guts on the inside of a cell. Now, um, Compare that to cytosol. Cytosol would just be the fluid inside of this, just in case you hear those words. Uh, they're not exactly interchangeable. Next, we have the ribosome. So the ribosome is the site of protein synthesis or the site of translation, if you want to use the fancy terms. So um, bacterial ribosomes are called 70S ribosome stands for, uh, S stands for Svedberg units, um, whereas most of our human or eukaryote ribosomes are 80S, so that's an important target for a lot of antibiotics. So ribosome, think protein synthesis. The nucleoid or nucleoid region is where the DNA is in a bacteria. So we obviously, eukaryotes, have a nucleus that, that protects our DNA. Bacteria don't, so the bacteria, or the, but all bacteria have one circular chromosome, so it's, it's tucked into this nucleoid region. So that's the nucleus nucleoid is. Next we have inclusion. So inclusion would be um, really um, storage vesicles would be the best way to think of it. Let's, it. This would be where like this bacteria would be storing glycogen so it could be used as a fuel source, etc, etc. So inclusion just think storage vesicles. Next we have the plasmids. So plasmids are wickedly important. We'll talk about them in a couple other videos. The definition of plasmid, and I'll put it up on the screen because it's hard, extra chromosomal genetic material. So it's telling you it's genetic material, it's DNA, but it's not part of that one circular chromosome the bacteria have. The reason these are important is these are vectors. These, they're self-replicating, so they can make copies of themselves, and they could actually, they're transmissible. So this bacteria here could, quote unquote, infect its neighbor with a gene that actually gives it some sort of resistance factor that teaches it to evade antibiotics or evade our immune response, et cetera. This is part of the reason that bacteria can evolve so quickly. All right, that's the plasmid. Next here we see the flagella or the flagellum. So um, these are actually way more complex than, than uh, eukaryotic flagella. So like the flagella on a human sperm is just a single whip-like flagella, but bacteria can have hundreds of flagella on their surface and they have a rotary motor that actually powers them. So it's quite fascinating. The way I like to think of it is the, the bacterial flagella has to be this powerful complex machine. Uh, uh, the uh, former editor of the journal Nature called it the most complex machine in the universe. But the reason for that is because bacteria are so tiny and, and there's so much surface tension and, 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 and forces holding water molecules together, this bacteria swimming through water would be like you swimming through peanut butter. So kind of interesting. All right, next we have a pillus. So the, 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 an, an organism that has a pillus would have usually just one or two of these. And the pillus is generally used to transfer DNA. Now they can be used for attachment and movement, but I like to say when I hear hooves, I think horses. The most important thing the pillus does is to transfer genetic material in a process called conjugation. So the pillus might be named uh, a sex pillus or a conjugation pillus as well. Next, we have the capsules. So obviously not, not all uh, bacteria have capsules, but they definitely make them more dangerous. They increase virulence, which virulence is a term for how pathogenic, how dangerous an organism is. Uh, the capsule is a, is a substance, a polymer substance, usually made of um, carbohydrates and, and or proteins that coats the outside of the cell. And the reason the capsule makes these organisms more dangerous is because it helps them evade phagocytosis. So many of your immune cells will engulf and destroy bacteria, but they can't or have a very hard time doing that with a bacteria that has a capsule. So that's the function of the capsule. We'll do a separate video on that. Next, we have the cell wall. There's, there's lots of different types of cell walls, but the two key ones would be gram-positive and gram-negative. We'll do a separate video on that. But the function of the cell wall, it does give bacteria its shape and its structure, but it's primarily for protection. But it's not like protection, think about like a fortress wall. It's primarily to protect the cell from bursting. So the plasma membrane is very weak and fragile, especially in 
and bacteria. So if water were to rush into this cell, um, it, the, the cell could literally pop if it weren't for the cell wall. So the cell wall, think shape and structure, but also protection. Then the last structure here uh, on this diagram is the plasma membrane, also known as the cell membrane. So all living things um, are composed of cells and all cells have to have a plasma membrane. So plasma membrane is a selectively permeable membrane, which means it he, it forces some things to stay in a cell, forces other things to stay out of a cell, and it's also where things move in and out. So the function of the plasma membrane is to keep the things that are needed in a cell and while helping to get rid of the things that we have, we have to get rid of, like waste products. So very, very important there. All right, so those are all of the key structures here of a bacterial cell or a prokaryote. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.